Thank you, Manish, and thank you all once again for joining us in this second and hopefully last online edition of SR Experts. My name is Sasha Niemcevic, and I have a privilege of leading the Network Automation Business Unit here at Nokia's IP Networks. Network Automation team is the one that brings you our flagship net, uh, Network Automation Management and Control Platform, Network Services Platform. And we have been working with many of you on implementing a variety of different automation use cases in your networks. As you know very well, automation has been a focal topic of, our, of conversation in our industry for quite a, some time now. And many of you have been working with us and other vendors in implementing those automation projects, going from theory to practice along this automation journey. And here, now, years later, as we've been learning from those experiences and implementing more and more automation projects, we are now able to better identify and quantify the benefits of automation in your networks. And with that in mind, we have asked the leading analyst firm, Analysis Mason, to perform a study to look at the automation projects that have been implemented in your networks using Network Services Platform and try to identify and quantify the benefits that you have seen in your networks. And I want to thank uh, those of you who have participated in this study. It's a very valuable information and allows us to learn where we can best apply automation to reap the biggest benefits. So what Analysis Mason have found is that the impact of automation can be roughly categorized in three different categories. The first one, the most obvious one, is the labor costs. Intuitively, we know that if you automate something, some manual tasks, uh, that there should be savings uh, in that process. And the processes that used to be manual, if they're now automated, should yield some, some savings. The second really important one, probably the most important uh, to many of you, is the service rollout. How long does it take to A, define new services, and then roll them out to your customers? And last but not least, a really important one is the service availability. As we all know, the vast majority of the outages in your networks are a result of human errors. Someone misconfigures a port configuration or uh, defines a wrong policy or ACL or provisions a wrong parameter on a, on a service that creates an outage. So our ability to automate the tasks will uh, result in avoiding some of those errors. But also, once the errors happen, ability to automatically tri triage and troubleshoot the, uh, out the outages will also result in better, uh, and better service availability. So Analysis Mason were able to quantify the savings in those areas. And what they have seen is, is that on a labor cost, they've seen a s upwards of 68% savings for those projects that they've studied. They've also seen that service rollout is 88% faster. Now imagine if it took 100 days to define and deliver a new service, and if now that can be done in 12 days, that's a humongous uh, savings. And last but not least, service availability was 85% higher for those projects where automation was implemented with NSP. So overall, total cost avoidance going from Pro, uh, environments or modus operandi without automation to the one with automation has resulted in 65% cost avoidance. Now, obviously, your ability to implement those automation projects will heavily depend on the capabilities of the platform itself that is being used to automate those projects. And with that in mind, we have been investing in network services platform quite heavily over the last few years, making it the best automation platform that can help you implement those automation use cases. Whether it's investment in a platform itself, such as the migration to the cloud, containerization, uh, and readiness for deployment in any Kubernetes environment, whether it's ours or the one uh, provided by your IT uh, departments, or introduction of variety of different applications that help with assurance, provisioning, or optimization of, your, uh, or optimization of your networks. In all of these cases, we continue to evolve network services platform to better suit your needs. But the major transitions have happened in the area of automation and the frameworks that are necessary to support efficient and programmable automation. 
The first one is the introduction of intent-based networking as a fundamental paradigm shift in NSP, going from network as a so source of truth to the paradigm in which network engineers define the desired state, intended state, and let the controller such as NSP trans translate that desired state into the conf specific configurations in the network. That the desired state is expressed in Yang, and it's usually a very abstracted uh, definition of the configuration of a device or a service. The rest of the translations, the details of the configurations, and in particular specifications for a variety of different network elements coming from different vendors, are defined by using a model-driven mediation framework, which is pluggable, programmable, and vendor agnostic. So by investing in model-driven mediation framework, we allow NSP to remain stable as a controller while network elements might be changing its releases, variants, new variants might be introduced, and so on and so forth. And last but not least, the key enabler to automation itself is the programmable aspects and flexibility of the platform, network services platform, uh, on its own. Very often, you may want to define the behavior of uh, the controller to fit your needs, whether it's defining uh, certain policies, behaviors, or even writing a workflow using our workflow engine that can sequence certain actions and triggers into the sequence of events that fit your use case and your needs. All of these enhancements in framework itself enable automation use cases to be implemented in a more efficient way. Now, when we think about the service fulfillment, the latest uh, uh, enhancements in that area have been done using that very ba uh, intent-based framework that we just talked about. Intent-based service fulfillment is the evolution of our service fulfillment capabilities. As we went through abstraction of uh, service fulfillment APIs and standardization of the object models, we are now at a point where a very uh, customizable service models can be implemented using intent-based service fulfillment. And all of this can be done on the fly by your network engineers or Nokia's network engineers who can program those service models without having to change NSP release. With that, once the intent-based service fulfillment is used to deliver services, we can also then, using assurance, audit, and synchronization capabilities, ensure that those intents, those intended services, uh, remain, the configuration of those services remains for days and months after it has been implemented in its originally desired state. Audit and synchronization help uh, achieve that. Now, the second part of integration or with a variety of different network elements often results in the need to perform a lot of inter interoperability testing. When we talk about multi-vendor management and control, then we really talk about NSP integrating into those uh, different network elements coming from different vendors and making sure that those integrations work. With that in mind, we participate regularly participate in an in interop event called the ANTC. And the last two events, one in November last year and one in April this year, have been uh, done to perform interoperability tests where NSP was used as a controller uh, performing uh, layer two and layer three service uh, fulfillment across Cisco, Sienna, Huawei, and IP Infusion devices. And in all of those cases, we have been able to successfully validate that that integration can be done efficiently and that the uh, service provisioning can be, can be done across those network, variety of network devices. So in effect, a network services platform as a, as a controller plays a key role in integrating your OSSs and your applications into the multi-vendor heterogeneous network by providing intent-based pluggable framework through standard rest of APIs and by allowing pluggable adaptation into those uh, multi-vendor networks using multi-model-driven uh, mediation. And over the last few years, working with many of you on those uh, uh, automation projects, we have delivered over 170 different adapters to, um, to help with integration in, uh, into the multi-vendor networks. 
Now, there is an example of a, of a service provider in uh, South America, a large service provider in South America that is using NSP to uh, provide uh, enterprise services to their customers. Their network is around 650 uh, PE routers, so consisting of uh, Cisco, Juniper, Huawei, and Nokia routers. And before they introduced Network Services Platform, they have used uh, quite a few different tools to stitch services across different, different uh, vendor islands. And it was very costly and very cumbersome and required a lot of changes every time they introduced a new network element and so on and so forth. So when we introduced Network Services Platform into their network, first thing that happened was OSS integration became, became really simple. They only needed to do one integration into, into the one API from their OSSs, and they used single point of contact for uh, provisioning. At the same time, they also used a single interface and single pane of glass for any assurance functions from, from alarms, uh, telemetry collection, and so on and so forth. And we then also delivered a number of different adapters to integrate into those Cisco, Juniper, and Huawei devices so that they can easily introduce new devices and upgrade the ver different versions without having to upgrade the entire stack on top of that. Now let's switch to the second aspect uh, that we talked about earlier, which is uh, closing the loop and focusing on uh, assurance and optimization. It's a really, really important part of the entire uh, approach we've been taking for many years. As we talked about earlier, uh, network management and control is not just about provisioning the devices, configuration of services, but also making sure that those uh, uh, may remain up and running and that the configurations uh, remain to uh, or, or the, their original uh, desired state. So with that, we have been investing quite heavily in a variety of different assurance and optimization functions. We have implemented telemetry-based optimization, which relies on modern telemetry streaming capabilities to um, uh, de derive latency and utilization uh, information and drive the op optimization use cases. Uh, network and service super supervision uh, applications continue to provide real-time health and state information about the devices and services, uh, alarm triage, uh, troubleshooting, and correlation uh, applications help with better and faster troubleshooting, and baseline analytics is also one of the uh, new, newer additions to our assurance capabilities. One example of a company uh, in Australia, service provider in Australia that has been introducing NSP for uh, a few years ago to fully automate their operations in all, all different aspects. They introduced in, in last year, they finished the first phase of introduction and at the end of the year they, they decided on, uh, they took it upon them th themselves to measure the improvements that they've seen in their operations going from previous model uh, of operation using different tools to what is the uh, result what are the results of uh, introduction of NSP and these are the, 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 the results that they've shared with us alarm triage and uh, processing of alarms in their networks went from uh, six minutes to one minute 83 percent savings the troubleshooting of outages in their network has, uh, they've seen over 95 percent improvements very significant improvements in uh, their operations just by introducing NSP as a single pane of glass for their, their operators. Last topic I would like to talk about is the topic of use cases and implementation of use cases. We have taken approach a couple of years ago to start building something we call use case catalog. Uh, Mike Thompson has a, a breakout session on this topic and I would encourage you to take some time and learn more about it. But here I would like to just share some highlights of a use case catalog approach. What we have seen is that very often automation use cases can be somehow grouped and categorized from one uh, service provider to another. There are, there, are, there are similarities in use cases that we uh, implement in your networks, whether it's a, uh, equipment and device configuration, zero touch provisioning, whether it's a service fulfillment or optimization, IP optical integration, and, uh, and so on and so forth. There are, there are groupings of use cases that we see uh, being implemented over and over again. And what we have done is we have taken the approach where we combine the capabilities of a platform, of product features, and services 
which are network engineers that are needed to implement those customizations and those use cases in your network. The more programmable the platform, the more skilled engineering uh, uh, labor we need to implement those, those use cases. And many of you have very large, very capable engineering departments and have been using NSP more as a framework to implement automated use cases yourselves. But uh, there is quite a few service uh, providers who don't have those capabilities and rely on Nokia's network engineers to provide implementation and validation of those automation projects. And in that case, we can see a significant improvement from going from a custom one-off approach where all of the different phases of uh, a project implementation have to be done from use case definition, network design, software implementation and validation testing that can result in a very, very unpredictable outcomes can take a long time to, to implement. What we have seen is by applying a use case catalog where we have taken those use cases and industrialized them, created templates for use case definition, for network design, prepared uh, Po possible uh, definitions and templates for intense workflows or, or uh, adaptation plugins, we can accelerate the implementation of the use cases. We can uh, reduce the risk because th those, some of those things are repeatable. We can uh, have a more predictable outcomes. And of course, we can save on time. So in the end, I would like to leave you with a few key takeaways. One is that uh, there are clear benefits in implementing automation. We have seen it directly in working with many of you and uh, uh, executing on those automation projects. We have also seen the results of analysis Mason study. And we hear anecdotally from many of you that you are increasing the spend in investment in automation. NSP as a platform is more than capable in helping you implement and accelerate those automation projects. And our approach with use case catalog is helping uh, re with repeatability and predictability of implementation of those use case pro projects. And in the end, the question is uh, not if we will want to go to automation, but how fast and which use cases do we want to implement. And with that, I want to thank you for your time. And I want to hand it over to some of your colleagues who are participating in our customer panel. Thank you.